What is up guys, it's Chironic here. Um, welcome to the first video on the Hylium Mix channel. A lot of people have been asking how I and other people such as Declan and Fire produce these Hytale models when the game isn't even out yet. And many people just have tips about them that they've messaged me on Discord asking me and I'm sure the others also get these questions. I've myself have asked Declan many things on how to improve my models. Um, it takes patience basically and your first model you're probably gonna look back and laugh about because it's never going to show you what you're gonna be like. For instance, this is my first model. It, it's not the best. I like, This is what I started off with now. There were many things I didn't know. This is how I organized everything. I just sort of put it everywhere. Uh, the eyes were drawn on and it weren't the right thing. It, it looks very weird. And then for this model, I worked on it to produce Negan. Now, this Negan is, again, you can tell it's Negan. The texture is a lot better. I've cleaned things up. The sizes, the things have improved, but they're definitely not accurate. Uh, but as you can see, it's, again, significantly worse than even just this base model and if you put the work in over a couple months you'll be able to achieve something like this where you have like multiple things like a bag a gun uh you your texturing is very very different if you if i come here and click on this you can then think about posing the character in a certain way ready to render it now this series is going to have multiple episodes i'm basically going to be bringing you from the start of the creation of a model to towards a, a render like this that i've created i'm going to be improving with you guys like i'm by no means the best at this personally i think declan is but i i know little things now and i think i'm at a, a point where I'm able to show people how I create them to a good enough standard, but also learn with you because there are definitely things uh, that I can improve upon. I'm lazy in some aspects, but in other aspects I put in the work, like this bag. I probably spent more time on this bag than I did the cold python. And it, I think it definitely shows in terms of texturing and, and stuff like that. So to go through a couple things, this is Craft Studio. This is created by the people who created the Hytale model maker. In fact, this is just, it's kind of a lower version of it. They use this as a base to create the Hytale model maker. So that's why a lot of model people decide to use this in the Hytale community because essentially it's getting used to the program that Hytale model maker will be before it's out. Some other people use Blockbench. I haven't personally used it myself, but I've heard it's good. Um, but I use Craft Studio, so that's what I'm going to be showing everything on. But you might pick up one or two things uh, that you can apply to Blockbench. So, to go over a couple things, dimensions and all that stuff. Now, this will be in a description. Uh, I'll show you how to import and everything, all of this stuff. So you can have this model opened on your screen and you can use it as a way to work on your own. As you can see, everything over here is, I can click on something and then I can see where it is. It's highlighted in pink over here. I can move it on here and like turn it like that or in any way, shape or form, mess with it just by simply looking for something here. Now, again, I recommend keep this tidy because if you just have a bunch of things called block, 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 you're going to get confused. And you're going to have to go through like a bunch of them to click the one that you want to mess with. But if I then move torso upper, which is what everything is connected to, um, everything will move. My, my whole character will move with it. But say if I just wanted to move uh, the articulation of the head without the body moving, I can do that. But if I did it on the torso, everything would move. It's basically a way to have joints. So I can move this whole arm with without it being an issue. To I, I don't have to like 
mess with this and move this up to a certain point and then mess with the fist and move that up to a certain point i can just mess with that and then from there this moves along with it just like a normal hand does so you you want to keep that in mind because many people will then design a model uh, and although it's easy just to like move stuff under each other it, if you from the start keep that in mind you'll be able to um definitely save yourself a lot of time now my painting down here a lot of people have different ways of setting it, setting it out but i like to go in a way where i'm like uh, i'm looking to mess with this hand so i'll come down here and mess with it here so it's all in order i'm now going to go over what certain things mean in terms of in the craft studio app itself so this is the position so this will be where this is so say if i wanted him to have i don't know an arm coming out of his head i can move him up to there this is then the orientation of it so you can you can mess with any direction this is the block size now this is something you got to watch out for when this says block size as you can see if you scroll into here this is smaller than this but it has the same pixel size if that makes any sense so say if i wanted to expand this leg i want i wanted him to have a bigger leg and i wanted him to have the same amount of pixels i will use this to expand it but if i then decide that that pixel amount is correct and i uh, enjoy it but i just want to make it bigger i can move this with the stretching tool and it will become the exact same size so it doesn't expand on the painting thin but it becomes bigger this is a pivot point now this is one that i took a while like it, i understood what it did but i would create a model and then i'd do the pivot point and now it's just normally in my thing so pivot point is like where you move it uh where you move the directions from and where everything expands from it's basically the center point of what you're telling that block to be so say if i didn't mess with it and this was directly in the middle like this and i then had this here and it was at the center point now this is at the top where the elbow is and this is at the center point if i then decided to move this up and started putting him into a, another hand position it's not in the middle this is the paint now a lot of people dislike craft studio because of lack of paint options now i agree that it's not that good in terms of painting you don't want to be using this as the painting what you want to use this as in your head as a basic color and as a reference now personally i use photoshop but there's other uh programs out there like gimp and that sort of stuff and if you copy this and then you can literally copy it and paste it into your application it will come up pink uh the non-textured the png image and if you just leave it the exact same color of pink and then paste it back in it'll, it'll still have the same translucent opacity so in the description of this video you'll have this obviously he will be in his normal pose and you will be able to import it now what you want to do is when you come home you click options and then you you have all these different things like general game controls import and export members recycle bin click on import and export click on this button find it import it um and then if you want to export it for any way shape or form you won't be exporting it as an object or as anything else you will export it in a way where people can import your model into craft studio there are a couple of things to look out for for instance when you duplicate sometimes uh the stretching value may look this may look completely normal to you but if it has a minus one when you do come to render something it will screw up um just the shading of it and stuff will look weird and as you can see by these photos or this photo um when rendering everything looks nice and glossy but it just it looks a different tint 
and it will screw up. And a way of fixing it is just to do that. As you can see here, this would be shaded, shaded weird um, because of the minus 0 0.85, but it looked normal. But say if I then decided, okay, let me go fix that, that would happen and it'd be back to front and it'd be a whole process of getting it to look right. There's no undo button, but that's why you've got to keep saving under different revisions. I'm going to show you how to texture, how to add little parts on like the hair to give it more of a realistic shape, bags, guns, etc. Um, I'm also going to be showing you how to take it in and out and texture it with a different program. And then I'm also going to be showing you how to render it. Now, I'm, those are just the basics of the model making, but I'm myself, like I said at the beginning, I'm learning. So there are definitely things that I will change with my process in the next coming weeks and months. I'll definitely improve. I'll definitely be like, I should have done this from the start, but I'll make you aware on my Twitter. I'll have update videos. I'll do the main series, but then if I ever have other things to go into detail with, if you forget enough questions, then I will do that. So thank you for watching the first video on the Hylinx channel. Um, more infected content will be coming soon. More infected and orientated, actually explaining what the game's going to be about. Check out my Twitter and check out Declan and Fire's Twitter because it's very good looking at other model makers content to ha look how you can do the eyebrows or the hair in a certain way and it's good to have variety so rather than just copying one specific model maker if you look at how we do it and then we, you also go onto the high tail website and look how they have done it with all the media section you're gonna come out with a better product than you would have if you've just looked at one person um so yeah thank you for watching guys goodbye